Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So, guys, the slow trickle um, path basically heading towards disclosure just keeps coming. And of course, we don't trust NASA. Let's just get that right out of there. Never a straight answer. And so, we know that they've been hiding things forever. And now, just slowly but surely, they are continually dropping hints. Uh, laying little seeds out there for us to follow the trail and so here out of the Sun and okay some people will say well the Sun that's a that's a rag yeah but I have the PDF from NASA to show you so it's actually quoting legitimate stuff um, NASA admits tiny super intelligent aliens may have already visited Earth and says some UFO sightings cannot be explained or denied a top NASA scientist said in the space agency needs to be more aggressive in the hunt for alien life. And so, you know, when I see things like this, I automatically think of the opposite a lot of times. So tiny, super intelligent aliens, you know, maybe we saw some giants visit Earth, as we've seen from, you know, the Egyptian hieroglyphics, the Sumerian scrolls, the legends coming through, uh, the different indigenous peoples, you know, from the Hopi to the Dogon to the Australian Aborigines, um, you know, all the native cultures tell you of star people, people coming from the sky. It's always the same story when you get down to it. And <clears throat> the Native American uh, stories as well talk about uh, how they taught them how to farm and how to do so many different things. They actually brought civilization, according to them. And that's the same thing we see in the Book of Enoch, except for with a kind of a negative twist. And that's the interesting part, because the Book of Enoch basically has it as a negative twist, that these you know beings taught humans how to do all these things, but then somehow it was a bad thing. And where when we look at the other cultures, the other cultures, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually they were helping. So that, that's one of the interesting parts to look at. <clears throat> but I'm digressing here. So uh, NASA scientist admits that it's entirely possible aliens have already visited Earth. Well, yeah, I think most of us think that's the case, or at least about half of us. And the space expert noticed that not noted that all not all UFO sightings can be explained or denied. And we should be more open-minded about the possibility of alien visitors. And NASA has been investing in SETI, which is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, better known as aliens. And, uh, and that's all for show. I, I really do think that's all for show because I know the ones at the top, they all know what's going on. As I've said, I've had you know, direct conversation with people that have been in the government, around the government, and uh, or, and or, or currently, <clears throat> and they say that you know at the top of things, really everybody on Earth reports ultimately to somebody that's not of Earth or you know not basically Homo sapiens sapiens. So at the top of that pyramid, you know, is something that's not exactly what we are, and simply they're leaking these things out now in, in slow little bits. And then you'll have people that will say, well, it's going to be all Project Blue Beam, and there really are no aliens, it's just demons. You know, there's ample evidence that, you know, there are things that are demons. If we look at the Hindu uh, holy books, there are the wars of the Asuras and the Devas. And so the Asuras are basically demonic, and the Devas are positive beings, you know, and so they equate more to uh, good, quote-unquote, um, perhaps good extraterrestrials, perhaps good interdimensionals, perhaps good gods with a small g, quote-unquote, as um, I think most of us would agree there's ultimately one source uh, that has gotten confused over time. And so this is the PDF from NASA, so you guys could actually read it for yourself. And, you know, instead of reading the newspaper article saying what it's saying, let's read what they said. And so, to me, this is part of a program, completely part of a program, because, you know, we, we communicate too much now, you know, for things to be hidden from us. And that's, that's the bottom line. It's getting to be impossible for things to be hidden from us. You know, they could distort and twist, which they do at every turn and every tw every twist and turn. But now we could basically compare things. We could compare all the traditions from around the world. We could look, 
you know, not only into the biblical history, which we in the Western societies grown up with, but we can actually see what the indigenous people from all around the globe have legends of. Now we know the Sumerian tales as well, which we didn't before. And we also, you know, can go deep into the, the Vedas and the Hindu history, which gives you so much uh, fascinating knowledge as well. Like it's actually in the Vedas, the shape of the galaxy, and even basically the span of our galaxy. And it's like, how did they ever know that unless they were tapping into something much higher and as far as consciousness goes, or unless they were taught perhaps by beings that are either extraterrestrial and or interdimensional. And so this goes on and, uh, it says, in light of our most recent understanding of the age of planetary systems that might support life, I discuss a set of assumptions that currently guide SETI research and make recommendations for a new, more aggressive approach. Background and current assumptions, recent discoveries due to the Kepler project, and the Kepler project has identified tons of planets that could be habitable. Um, okay, considering that the age of our solar system is about 4.5 G years, Earth-like planets could exist that are 6 G years older than our own. So basically, they're saying that, you know, just think about this. We've been here for X amount of years. Whatever that really is, we really don't know. We're just going on the assumptions that they've given us. But just imagine a civilization that was here just a little bit longer than we were, as far as you know, the big scale of time. How much more advanced would they be? So considering further that technological development in our civilization started only about 10,000 years ago and has seen the rise of scientific method methodologies only in the past 500 years, we can surmise that we might have a real problem in predicting technological evolution even for the next thousand years let alone six million times that amount. So what if a civilization had been around for six million times that amount of time? What type of technology would they have if they advanced as we did? And what if they were more gifted intellectually and connected uh, spiritually as well than we are? Could they be, well, obviously we could view them as gods with a little g because they would be able to do amazing things. And that's just a pretty ob obvious basic surmise. So in light of these numbers, I think we need to revisit even our most cherished assumptions. That number one, interstellar travel is impossible or highly unlikely. So we, we can't really say that because we are basically infants compared to some civilization that's been around for 5 million or 50 million years. When we're just basically, uh, you know, we're, we're nothing but toddlers going around in diapers as far as that goes in comparison to the technology that they would have and the understanding they could have about how the universe works. And so it gets into other things and it says radio waves continue to be the major form of communication for thousands or millions of years. Perhaps, perhaps not. Maybe, you know, because they're just looking for radio waves. What if these beings had developed to the point where they could communicate telepathically, there'd be no need for that. And, you know, perhaps because of quantum entanglement, it could be instantaneous no matter the distance. So again, there would be no need for that type of technology. It would be looked at as archaic, like a, a stone ax. Intelligent civilizations would be based on carbon life. That's another thing that we're rethinking, perhaps crystalline. And perhaps that's what we're evolving into. And so life and everything does evolve. And I think part of the problem is, again, we've always been set against each other. You have to believe in either evolution or you have to believe in creation. Well, perhaps there's both. And that's the big thing. Perhaps there's both. And, you know, in my opinion and the opinion of so many, when you start looking into these legends, it appears that, you know, on this planet with us, it was both. And, uh, and that's something that many might agree or disagree with. But when we look at all the evidence, it's pretty interesting. So it might not even be, life might not even be carbon based. And ultimately life is simply consciousness and, and everything is energy. So they could simply be energy as well at some point evolving. And that is what we are on the higher dimensions as well, purely energy. Even, even this physical body is still mostly vacuum and mostly energy. 
you know, well, it's all energy when you get down to it. It just appears to be solid. So we have not been and are not being visited, number four. So that's something they need to rethink as well. And this is what he's pointing out. And so new opportunities, conclusions, and recommendations. In light of the challenges described, I propose a more aggressive approach to the future study exploration following dir direction. Engage physicists in what might be called speculative physics. physics. Still grounded in our most solid theories, but with some willingness to stretch possibilities as to the nature of space-time and energy. Engage technologists in future futuristic exploration of how technology might evolve, especially with artificial intelligence (AI). And that's something that's something to talk about all on its own. And engage sociologists in speculation about what kinds of societies we might expect from the above developments and whether or how they might choose to communicate. And then consider the UFO phenomenon worthy of study in the context of a system with a very low signal to noise ratio, but nevertheless with possibility of challenging some of our assumptions and pointing to new possibilities for communication and discovery. And so, you know, this is coming out of NASA as we get our slow trickle disclosure coming through. And I think everybody could see that now. And uh, I think that they're willingly, when I say they, I do think that the secret space program and the government, they're, they're letting us see uh, ships and things that we have that are way ahead of what we are supposed to be at technologically. And uh, I do think also that we'll have disclosure, I'm hoping, completely within our lifetimes. And I do think so. I, I think it's actually just around the corner. And, um, you know, let me know what you guys think about never a straight answer coming out and showing us all this. So obviously things are changing and uh, things are fascinating when you get down to it. And so it's definitely exciting times we live in, that is for sure. Well, my friends, as always, please do thumbs up, support the channel. Go ahead, subscribe, click the bell for all the notifications, and share with as many people as possible. Let's wake up everybody so people aren't surprised, terrified, and or having heart attacks when they see who knows what they're going to see in the skies over their heads. As always, my friends, God bless and namaste.